I want to know, does the thought of teaching exponent rules make you want to pull your hair out? Yeah, I, I get it. Totally. I'm right there with you. Oh my goodness. It's so tedious to a lot of algebra one students, pre-algebra students, wherever, wherever that falls in your curriculum. Oh my goodness. Or, you know, it could be algebra one or algebra two and they just act like they've never seen it before. Right. I mean, there's that too. So yeah, it's enough to make you want to pull your hair out. Um, what I'm going to show you today is some little quick Google Forms mini assessments so that you can either copy mine and make your own um, or make, you know, tweaks to it and make it make it your own or, um, you know, see what mine look like and see if you think you just are like, I don't have time for this. I'm just going to buy those. That's an option, right? OK, so I hope that this can help you in either either situation. So this is like the plain Jane, basic, super basic. Do you even have a clue about this basic rule? Like that's what these five problems are. So on this one, it is just literally can you add can you add variables? Can you multiply them? And notice that the answer choices are like, you know, you know, when they see X times X, somebody's going to put two X. Um, you know, do they know that it's X squared? That kind of thing. So those answer choices are there. Um, do you know the question, quotient rule? And so here, like, you know, some of them are going to add. So X to the eighth is there. And then they're either, you know, they're not going to know whether to put it on top or bottom. So that's those answer choices. I mean, I tried to make it so that, so that not only do you know, oh, they missed this one, but you know why they missed it right? You know what their mistake is. Okay. So then here, you know, some of them are going to add those exponents by mistake. So X to the fifth is there. So you can pinpoint that here. Do you just know the zero rule? Um, so uh, I think pretty, pretty straightforward. There's not an upload button for them to show any work because come on, you know, right? There's just, it's just, do you know it or do you not? So here's what it looks like from a student point of view when they um when they look at it so it's a super quick simple way to assess that here are here's one where i'm just looking at power and product rules so super straightforward again but again tried to think about okay what are the most commonly um common ways that kids are going to make mistakes and made my answer choices that way it's not just these canned answer choices that are just like Oh, well, duh, of course, if it's anything, it's going to be this one, you know, um, I'm not in, I'm not into that. I, I want the kids to really be challenged and be like, okay, you know, you got to show me that you actually do understand this process here. So, um, you know, here they have to understand, I mean, that's the real basic part of it is just, do you get the negative four square quantity squared is going to be a positive 16. And so that narrows it down to two. Um, and then are you adding exponents or are you multiplying? So um, anyway, that's what those look like. This one does have the upload your work button. Of course, you can toggle that anytime. You can always toggle it to optional if it's if it's on if required is toggled off like you see it here. That just means that they can upload it. So like if you have kids at home, that need to upload their work and show you um, and you have kids in class that are like going to turn it in, you know, on paper, then you can change that to optional. I'm going to change it back while I'm thinking about it. Or you can hit the trash can and you just delete it totally. If for whatever reason you don't need to see that, you can also always change the point values. You can make that zero points um, or a hundred points. You can make it whatever you can do that on any of the problems as well. Click on the answer key and then you can just change the point value. All right. So here's what this one looks like, you know, from the kid point of view, student point of view. Uh, there you go. And I have it where it'll shuffle. That's why the upload your work button was not last. It gets shuffled along with the others. In this case, it's the very first thing. But I always I always set it up to shuffle questions. And so here's the exponent rules for quotient at zero, negative exponents. Um, so there you go. A little, a little negative exponent never hurt anybody. Okay. And here's what it looks like from the kid point of view. Da da da. There we go. 
and last one all right and fourth one because you know we got to put it all together right we got to combine it and so um you know you might even use these to differentiate among your kids in some ways um it may you may it may be that you would assign different assessments to different students or groups or whatever um but this is very much a combined exponent rules you know they got to put it all together um and not trying to be tricky with the answer choices but trying to make the answer choices really assess okay if they missed it then what was it they were doing wrong were they adding when they should have multiplied did they subtract when they should have added that kind of thing all right so i want to show you on teachers pay teachers i have the i have a the bundle for the polynomials unit and in that are all four of the exponent rules but then it's got i mean it's got all the way back to the beginning of leading coefficients and degree and descending order um adding and subtracting multiplying gcf um factoring out a gcf not not the whole factoring process that's in the solving quadratics unit but um but at least figure it out GCF and being able to factor it out from a polynomial. So that all that is all in a bundle. And then you can um, if you want to just look at the individual exponent rules, you can see those as well. So, uh, yeah, hope that helps. Thanks. Hit the like button. Yeah, please do that if you're still watching. I appreciate it.